Hey, what's up fam? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a really blessed holiday um, if you're celebrating it. If you are not and you are here, thank you for coming in. So I don't know if I'm putting this out on Monday or if I'm putting this out on Tuesday, but it definitely has to get put out. Um, you see the title. You see the title. And you just have to ask the question. Why? Why is there a shortage in these eight states and only certain communities are facing this shortage? So that's what the story is about. But I have some other things that I want to entangle within it because it kind of all is questionable and fitting. So before we get started, please hit that like button, share the video out. Definitely comment if you are new to the channel. Hello, my name is Tommy. Nice to meet you. I hope that you decide to stick around, hit that red button, subscribe to the channel, and turn your notifications on. On a busy news day, I will upload more than one video a day, but typically on a slow day, I will upload one, and that'll probably be around four or five o'clock in the afternoon. So that you know, if you don't see that notifications, go look for it, is probably there. That video is there, it's just not being pushed. So let me share out what I want to show you guys. So without a doubt, this is happening. The USDA has admitted to it. They have admitted to mistakes as food shortages hit tribal populations and low income seniors. That's what is happening. But the question has to seek out there. You have to wonder if it can happen to them, can it happen to everyone? Can we be facing more food shortages? So I'm gonna give you a little bit of this article, not all of it, because it's very long. So the Agriculture Secretary, Tom, acknowledged his department made mistakes in awarding a contract to a single distributor to supply critical food aid programs, a change that has triggered food shortages among low-income populations in at least eight states. I will be giving you those states. Stay tuned. Since the contract with the distributor called Paris Brothers, Inc., began in April. Tribes have reported delayed and missed deliveries as part of the food distribution program on Indian reservations. So we're not gonna be good to the Indian reservations, but we're gonna be good to the illegal immigrants that are coming in. Yes, we gonna talk about it. The same issue has plagued the commodity a supplemental food program, which serves low income seniors and food banks. So food banks are facing shortages as well. That's left some of those programs partners without key food staples. And many are now warning the shortages could get worse, much worse in the next few months. We are learning that, this is what they're saying. We are learning that our system was flawed and mistakes were made It's caused a lot of stress and a lot of difficulty, and we're trying to mitigate the consequences of that stress and difficulty as best we can, they say. The secretary added that USDA plans to bring AmeriCode, the other distributor that previously fulfilled delivery contracts for the two food aid programs, back for a six-month contract. Question, I have a question, let me raise my hand, I have a question. Um, why did y'all cancel their contract in the first place? Were you looking for something that was a little more cheaper and you got what you paid for, which was absolutely no food being delivered to these people? So starting sometime in the next few weeks, USDA has also brought in FEMA officials to help speed up food delivery and plans to bring in representatives from the Department of Defense after temporary FEMA officers leave their positions, steps that could prove costly for taxpayers. So in the end, their mistakes is what the taxpayers are going to have to pay for, their mistakes. 
And the people who are not getting the food, of course, are paying for their mistakes with not having food to eat. It's a shame. It is a shame. Prior to this year, Parents Brothers and AmeriCode had been the two distributors for the FDPIR and CSFP since 2007. Per regulations, USDA began a new bidding process for the contract in 2022, which was overseen by a panel made up of officials across USDA, including from the Food Nutrition Service and Agricultural Marketing Service. Of the seven viable applications USDA received, just one, Paris Brothers Inc., met the requirements for the contract. And he noted that the company had had a sterling record for timely and accurate delivery. Okay, but if you had the other company as a part of it before, why did they not meet the requirements then? And if they didn't meet the requirements then, these are my questions. If they didn't meet the requirements then, how come they meet the requirements all of a sudden now that this Paris Brothers Inc. is not delivering what they said they would deliver? So in a related video, it says we need immediate help. USDA says help for farmers during drought is available. So we have that going on. That's why we are probably going to experience some shortages on our shelves because the farmers are experiencing a drought. But anyway, back to this. That said, the secretary acknowledged that senior staff should have been involved earlier in the decision and the response says senior staff should have reviewed the switch from two contractors to one to supply the program. It was too much. They serve 770,000 people across the country and you only had one distributor. That makes no sense to me. I mean, what do I know? Makes no sense to me. It says the most severe food shortages and delivery disruptions this summer have been hitting tribes in the following areas, North Dakota, South Dakota, North Carolina, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Minnesota, Oregon, and Washington. According to three people familiar with the ongoing crisis who were granted anonymity to discuss the federal response, senior USDA officials have acknowledged the program advocates and Hill offices in recent days that the food shortages and delivery disruptions are ongoing. So this has not ended, even though they have added the new distributor to it to make it two distributors. But I don't think the second one has started yet. So USDA is urging groups that are part of those programs to place food orders as early as possible for September through early October deliveries to ensure they have one and a half months of food supply on hand and give distributors enough time to make new deliveries. Now, not getting into all of the article, I do have questions. One of which I've already asked some of them, but one of which is, why are we doing food distribution? Is it because they cannot go out to get their own food like if you're going to assist why are you not assisting financially to assist and i know it's probably gonna be some people out there oh you need they need to work for this they need to work for that people do work not everybody sit at home doing nothing twiddling their thumbs a lot of people do work and a lot of people you know don't want help but need help don't ask for help because they're too ashamed to ask for help because of what other people may think or say about them or that they are lazy. They don't want to. Everybody is not lazy. Now, there are some, there are many that don't want to. But please do not group every category of people in that area of they lazy, they don't want to work. Um and the only reason I say, why are they not financially assisting them and just giving them food and then the food not show up? If they had the money and the food didn't show up, they could go out and get it. I say that because let me go over here and show you this. 
I say that stop sharing for a second to say this. They have no problem. When I say they, I mean Congress, I mean whoever is deciding what they should be doing with whatever, have no problem helping other people that aren't even from here get things that people who've been here their whole life struggle to have, which is if you need help, Financially, we'll assist you financially. We'll we'll help you. Even if you're working, we will help you. Because, you know, if you meet a certain criteria every month, if you're working, you don't qualify to get food stamps to help feed your children. Meanwhile, you have people who have just arrived here, stepped foot on American soil, um, get cards that are filled with money. And they say it's fake news that they cannot get 10,000, they're not getting $10,000 on these cards. When I looked and did the fact check, that's what the fact check said. They're not getting that. But fact check also says the card can hold $10,000. Now, fact check also stated that each person gets three hundred, about $340 a month each person in the household. Well, if they have a household full of how many, then they're getting thousands of dollars. Okay. It's saying that the most they've given out is $1,400 a month and it's renewed, it's renewed every 28 days. So if you can give people who just got here, haven't worked for nothing over here, I'm not talking about the people who came legally to live here. I'm talking about the illegal ones, okay, that come here. And now they get a card, they get food stamps, they get health care, they get grants to go to college. And now look at this. California is trying to pass this legislation Legislature expands program to allow undocumented immigrants to get home loans. How many of you in the comments own your own home or would like to own your own home and would like a little bit of assistance from your U.S. government? It says a bill allowing home loans for the first time to undoc undocumented immigrants is heading to Governor Gavin Newsom. Now, he hasn't signed this yet. It's headed to him. But he hasn't said whether he will sign it amid growing pressure for a veto and a policy conflict with Vice President Kamala Harris' presidential campaign. If signed by the Democratic governor, Assembly Bill 1840. So listen out for Bill 1840. When you, You're going to start hearing about this a lot, okay? would make California, well, will make California the first state to provide home loans to undocumented immigrants. And you know, if they pass this bill, there are going to be a lot of states that are going to try to do it. Probably not certain states, but it's going to be a lot of states. It says the legislature this week voted in favor of the proposal by Democratic lawmakers. It amends the California Dream for All Shared Appreciation Program, which provides no interest loans of up to $150,000 to cover down payments and fees. I would love a bill like that to be in place for homeless veterans, single mothers, okay, AB 1840 is what it's called. It says an applicant who meets the program's requirements, including having social security and taxpayer identification numbers, won't be denied a loan because of immigration status. <clears throat> now, these are basically people. They're trying to get this passed, though, for people who've been here a while and may have businesses, pay taxes, but regularly would not qualify to get a home loan. But nonetheless, 
They're making everything easier for many people and not all. So the state Senate approved the bill 23 to 11 along party lines. So party lines, it don't matter what side you sitting on. They agreeing on it with some Democrats abstaining. Well, abstaining. Uh, the Senate, which made changes in the assembly's original bill, sent the measure back to the lower chamber. The assembly voted 45 to 15 on Wednesday in favor of the Senate version. So operated by the California Housing Finance Agency, the program started in 2023 and helps first time home buyers with down payments and fees. It was designed for low and middle class buyers. Now, uh, I think every state has something like this, but they don't have it where they're trying to specifically pinpoint this group of people here. So after the legislature approval, opponents immediately pressured Newsom to veto the AB 1840. Senate Republicans requested a veto on Wednesday in a letter to the governor, which he hasn't stated yet, y'all. The challenge for Newsom is he supports his party's presidential nominee, Harris, who backs an affordable housing aid pro, uh, proposal that excludes undocumented immigrants. Republican lawmakers said the loan program shouldn't be extended to undocumented immigrants at a time when it doesn't have enough money to meet the demand by the citizens. With many legal residents not able to afford home, should we be giving free cash to illegal immigrants is the question that was posed by Senate Minority Leader Brian Jones. That is a good question. What is the answer? Y'all respond in the comments what you think they should be doing about this. Republicans also warned the bill will encourage more undocumented immigrants to move into California. Not just California, but to move into other states. You see what's happening in parts of Colorado right now. They have gangs, Venezuelan gangs, that are taking over. I mean, literally taking over whole apartment complexes, communities, forcing the people within it who are also you know, immigrants, not all of them, but some of them, to pay them money to live there. This is this is the undocumented men that's coming in here of military age taking over. And then you have other gangs that are joining together to take over communities. This is Aurora. Let me let me go to Let me share this with y'all. Hold on. This is insane, but we have a shortage of food because you made a mistake with the um, the people you have coming in to distribute food, but you're not willing to give these people a card like you give the, the other people a card. Just saying. Let me pause this. Hold on. Make sure you it's on the screen. And put it where you can see it. So I'm going to put myself down in the corner. I might just take myself out altogether. I don't think it makes it any bigger. So yeah, it's not going to make it any bigger. So right here, concerns are growing in Aurora, Colorado over presence of Venezuelan gang, its impact on other migrants. Now you may say, well, I don't live there, but guess what? Immigrants they're coming in, illegal immigrants are coming in from every angle, okay? Some are being bused to some places. Concern is growing in Aurora 
Let's see. Y'all know I have to make it bigger for my eyeballs. It says there have been reports that members of the Trend de Arugua, something like that gang, took over an apartment complex in the city. Now, in the video, you're about to see them breaking into either an empty apartment or one that somebody's living in. Video circulating on social media shows a group of men trying to break into an apartment unit on Sunday, August 18th. That's how recent this is. The footage taken by the security camera of resident Edward Romero shows several men carrying firearms in front of a door, with two of them appearing to force it open. Romero told reporters the video was taken shortly before a shot, before a shootout took place inside the apartment. Inside, not outside, inside the apartment complex, there was a shootout. Romero also said he has moved out since the incident has occurred. The apartment complex called The Edge at Lowry had already seen neighbors complaining about massive trash pile and alleged criminal activity. The alleged gang activity is creating problems for migrants in the area. They Now, they're actually moving out of Aurora into Boulder, okay? They're moving into the main part of Colorado. So maybe then they'll do something about it. But as long as it's on the outskirts, they're not doing nothing about it. They say the gang is ruining the reputation of migrants who don't cause trouble and are just trying to make life for themselves here in the United States. Groups representing them say the migrants are trying to get housing and jobs, but some of the community are reluctant to help, fearing they may be a part of a gang. They don't know who they let in to the United States of America. They just said, come one, come all. Come one, come all. We're not going to vet you. We're not going to make you sign something. We're not going to make you take a picture when you come in so we can try to keep track of you. But yet they want to keep track of us who lived here a whole life. Aurora Police Department officers have been proactively patrolling areas where there is suspected gang activity. On Sunday, several officers connected with residents at the edge of Lowry Apartments to offer reassurance, provide updates on criminal activity. Them people don't want no police coming today, though. You want to know why? Because see, I I, I I don't say I grew up like this, but I did grow up in the projects. And what you don't want is the police coming to your door if there is some gang activity out in your area. Because they're going to think you're talking to the police about them. And as soon as the police leave, guess what's going to happen to you? I mean, these they're not going to talk to these police. They're not going to. So let me show you this video. Let me show you this craziness. But we got a shortage. Let me unmute it. We got a shortage of food on the reservations into low income seniors, Americans, but immigrants can get housing. Veterans can't even get housing. They can get health care. And I'm all and I'm not the person that's saying I don't want people to receive help, especially the ones who are here for to better their lives. But we have no idea who we let in. And so we are literally paying. Possibly gang members to continue their gang activity. We're funding it.
almost all of these men have weapons in their hands, either a handgun or assault rifle. That's, this makes no sense to me. Price of food is high, 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 high. We have so many people that are struggling to buy food, to have what they need for their families. Kids going off to school may only get that meal that they get at school because when they come home, maybe their parents can't afford the meal at home because they had to pay the rent or pay for something else. We got to do better as a society. And we definitely need to be concerning ourselves with our own people, like, Take care of your home before you step out of it to help others. We all should be helpers. But what have you done for me lately is, is not just a song by Janet Jackson. It's what have you done for your veterans lately? What have you done for your homeless community lately? Other than say, you can't sleep here. We're going to take you to jail. But yet I remember when the migrants first started coming in, they had tents, they had everything set up in the streets, on the sidewalks in these communities, and no one arrested them to take them to jail. But then you walk, but now you want to say, if you are homeless and you are sleeping here, I can take you to jail? That makes no sense to me. I'm sorry. It makes absolutely no sense. It's, it's shameful that we will arrest our American citizens who are struggling to make ends meet, who are being evicted and have nowhere to sleep. They may be sleeping in their car. They may be sleeping in a park. They may be sleeping in a tent on a sidewalk. But now you want to arrest them for being poor, for being um, uneducated or, you know, just not having enough. Meanwhile, the politicians are getting richer. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. They're all getting rich while we are going to the poor house because all of our money is being taken away by companies that are price gouging us in grocery stores. Just saying. Charging for everything that they can charge for. You know there's a, the charge for bags if you live, like especially if you live in California. You're going to get a 10 cent charge for a bag. So y'all, please leave your comments down below. I'm just venting because I just find it all so painfully sad that we can have people who will willing to sign up and basically give their lives, go in the military, fight wars, or if they don't fight wars, they're still serving the country. with the hope and promise of freedom for, for us while they're doing it. And then they come home and they're not even free to sleep on the street. You're going to get locked up or you're going to get fined like you have money to pay for it. We're going to give you a fine also for sleeping here. Yet they fought for that freedom to get a ticket to say, you can't be here. You're not wanted here. So if they're not wanted on the street, then why are y'all not making housing for them? Why are y'all so quick to find housing for people who have not done nothing for this country? Sorry. 
Sorry, not sorry, but somebody got to say it. Not all of them are bad, but not all of them are good. And we're supporting and funding whatever criminal activity the bad ones are doing because they're getting that card too. They getting the food stamps. They getting the money on the card every 28 days to buy whatever they want to buy. In Aurora, they got gun stores being broken into, ripped off businesses now they're branching out to other places in colorado and colorado is not the only place that has experiences with the venezuelan gang and other gangs shoot they probably make our gangs look like i don't know boy scouts girl scouts anyway let me go. If you got anything from this, I know I'm rambling, but if you got anything from this video, please, please, please definitely hit that like button. That is the free way to support this channel. So hit the like button, share it out and leave your comments. If you're new, please subscribe. I don't always ramble when I'm doing videos. This one just got me a little heated. So Y'all take care. Remember that I love you, but God truly loves you more. He created only one you. Be the very best you that you can be. And when you are, go out and spread God's love. Peace, love, and light. Thanks for being here on Tommy Bikes TV. I appreciate all of my new subscribers. I appreciate all of my returning subscribers. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.